The Walther PPK is world renowned, not only because it was used all through uh, World War II with German forces, but even more so because it was the gun that James Bond used in most of his movies. And the PPK is just an incredible, legendary, iconic pistol. But today we're going to take a look at its predecessor. The original design for the PPK was the PP. Uh, one of the big things about the PP that is different is that it has a longer slide and barrel. A uh, 3.9 inch barrel with the PP, 3.3 inch barrel uh, with the PPK. And of course the slide is extended. Also the PPK, they shortened the grip somewhat. Now the PPK was designed in 1931. Uh, and the PP again in 1929. First, we're going to make sure the gun is unloaded and we're going to release the magazine, which is right here under the slide, which is kind of unusual for a lot of European guns. And then check the chamber and it is empty. And we're going to go ahead and drop the hammer. It is an all steel frame pistol. It is a blowback design, which means that the recoil actually pushes against the recoil spring and functions the pistol bringing another one into the chamber. Uh, it is double single action and that means that with the hammer down you pull the trigger it actually actuates the hammer for a really heavy but smooth uh, trigger pull. Uh, but then with subsequent shots it'll be in the rear position and it has a very crisp single action. A little bit of take up here, very smooth four and a half pound consistent trigger. Uh, in fact, I tested it a number of times. It was coming in again over and over right at the four and a half pound mark. Uh, one of the things about the hammer, it has a safety, frame safety here that's also a decocker. So we bring it down and it puts it in safe mode, brings the hammer down. And then to release, just lift up and then you can fire in double action. Uh, they are all steel, which really makes it somewhat hefty, about 22 ounces. It's 1.2 inches in width, so it's really thin, 4.3 inches in height. Uh, a very concealable, excellent little small pocket pistol. One of the things about the PP, though, it was made in Germany all through World War II from 1929 all the way through to the 1945. Uh, and then production stopped. And, you know, a lot of it had to do with the treaties with Germany not being able to produce firearms during that time. And so production was moved to France, to the Manhuren plant. And in 1952 until 1986, all the PPs were made in France. My brother has one of the Manhurens. In fact, I did a uh, review on it a number of years ago, uh, actually when I first started my channel. And he still owns that pistol. It's excellent. But Carl Walther reopened uh, the facility in Germany and began to produce pistols, but still used a lot of parts out of France and the Manurin plant. Uh, and they were really excellent pistols. Uh, the bluing is really nice, uh, that deep cold blue. And of course, this one has some marks on it. And uh, which is typical, you know, with the with the age of these pistols. It has black plastic grips with the Walther logo. Uh, it has a nice little shallow beaver tail. Now, one of the things about the beaver tail I want to mention is that these can be uh, somewhat tough on people that have meaty or big hands, because as you can see, the slide rides not far off the web of your hand. Now I've had I've never had any trouble with any kind of slide bite, but I have you know medium-sized hands. Uh, one of the things that Walther did uh, was to extend the beaver tail somewhat out. So your modern PPKs have more of an extended beaver tail to help with that. The PP came in 22, uh, 25, 32 ACP, and 380 ACP. Uh, it was designed though with in the 32 ACP. In fact, Hitler carried a Walther PPK in 32 ACP and that was the pistol that he used to take his own life as the Russian forces were moving into Berlin. In fact, Elvis Presley uh, owned a Walther PPK and carried it and engraved on the slide was TCB for taking care of business. <laughs> and uh, hopefully we're going to be getting a Walther PPK in here to do some reviews. But one of the things about the PPK uh, that needs to be noted is that it had a again a shorter slide and barrel a shorter grip and in 1968 when the gun control act came into effect all guns imported under a certain size and weight were restricted 
It had to be over a size, over a certain weight, and the Walther PPK just didn't quite cut it. Uh, because of that, the Walther PPK S was designed, and that had the same slide and barrel length as the Walther PPK, but the size, same grip length as the Walther PP. And one of the things, this is a seven in one uh, round magazine, which the PPK had only six in one. So you can use PPKS magazines in the PP and vice versa, but you can't use PPK magazines in the PP. Has very tight serrations on the slide. It's very well rounded, excellent for concealed carry. Uh, the sights are, you know, they're, they're just what they are. They're driftable in the back, and then it has a front post in the front, which has a white dot. There is a white little bar that typically goes here that I'm going to replace uh, just to give myself a little bit better sight. Uh, there is a, there serrations on the top to cut down for glare. The hammer is a commander style hammer. It's really easy to grab, and it does have serrations on top. The magazine is steel and it does have a little finger rest on here that really gives you just a little bit more for, for carrying this pistol and it makes it a lot more pleasant to shoot at the range. Now to break the pistol down, of course we're going to remove the magazine, double check to make sure it's unloaded. Really simple, it's actually easier if you have the hammer back. Pull down on the trigger guard and just move it a little bit so it rests right on the frame like this. And then bring the slide back and up and then let it go forward. It is a fixed barrel design, which makes this a fairly accurate pistol. Uh, the recoil spring here, here's the barrel. Uh, again, you can see it's attached to the frame itself. But a very well-machined piece, which is no surprise by Walther. I mean, Walther has made quality firearms for a number of years. And, uh, and that's pretty much all you do to field strip. So it's really easy. And then to return, just bring on your recoil spring. Bring back your slide, making your barrel go through the end of the slide. Bring down, lower it, put your trigger guard into place, and then drop your hammer. Now, while shooting at the range, had a great time. You know, I did read quite a bit that the 380 could be kind of snappy. Um, after 100 rounds, uh, just a little sore right here, but not much. And really, I was surprised at how little recoil there was. Uh, 380s. In a steel frame pistol, I really wasn't expecting a whole lot. I know the 32 ACP is a really smooth shooter, and this is also. Um, you know, if, if you are having trouble with the recoil on this being snappy, you need to get one of those exercisers and <laughs> exercise your hand because this is not uh, too bad. Uh, now, again, with the meaty hands, you want to be careful. I didn't experience any slide bite, and I was halfway through. I shot about 100 rounds, and I was about halfway through before I even thought about slide bite. Uh, and I didn't experience any. And of course, again, I have medium-sized hands. But as far as the reliability, it was excellent. Uh, the sights are a little difficult, but they are a, this is a carry gun. So it's not made to have high sights to snag, but very adequate. Uh, the gun overall, it was just a real pleasure to shoot. And if you're looking for something for the range in 380, I'd highly recommend this little Walther. Now here on the slide are the markings and of course the 9mm Kurtzed, which is 9mm short or 380 ACP, made in West Germany. Serial number here and serial number here. Matching serial numbers will definitely help the value of the pistol. Uh, of course, again, a lot of these were made in France by the Manuren plant and that will be marked clearly. Uh, this pistol in particular, uh, it is an import. Uh, this was not made by Inner Arms, which there were a number of PPKs that were made here in the United States under Walther licensing. And in 1978, Ranger Manufacturing produced them. And then in 2002, Smith & Wesson was licensed to make the PPK and the PPKS at Fort Smith, Arkansas. Uh, and those are definitely American made and a little bit different in value. Now value on the PP can range in anything you can imagine. There are a lot of World War II uh, surplus pistols out there with Nazi markings. A lot of them are non-import. I mean, a lot of them are bringbacks. So you're gonna have to really do your homework and what you want in a Walther PP. Uh, this particular model is from Century Arms and they've imported a bunch coming in uh, from Germany. And uh, these are really top-notch, everyone that I've seen. 
Um, these have just started to hit the market. In fact, I got in touch with Century. They sent me the pistol. The Century Arms imports it, and they get it out to distributors, which get them out to, manuf to uh, retail shops. And so they really can't give you a full price on this. But if you look on GunBroker and some of the other companies that import a lot of guns like this, AIM Surplus is a big one. Uh, you'll you'll be able to get some values and typically when they're first surplused in and brought into the country uh, imported in they the price is very reasonable at first and so I'm really looking at this pistol that run in between the five and six hundred dollar mark and don't hold me to that uh, you'll need to do the research yourself but really as far as the value collector value on these they do bring a premium price but guys I'll tell you the one thing about these even the ones that have been imported. And right here is the Century Arm uh, Marks, which I think they did a fairly decent job by putting it at least here on the grip and not stamping it on the slide, which happens a lot of times and really is kind of ugly on the slide. Gunbroker.com is also a great place to be able to find values to see what people are, are actually selling these pistols for. And if you're interested in one of these pistols, uh, the best thing to do is to get your gun shop to get in touch with Century Arms. They can order direct and get these pistols. These are typically in the odd lots, and uh, I like to go through the odd lots and look for different things that are very unique. And that way you can get a really nice pistol for a very reasonable amount of money. I want to thank HPR for supplying the ammo. Hyper clean. Some of the best ammunition on the market. Period. So the Walther PP, legendary. Walther PPK, iconic. Just two great pistols. High quality Walther made. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. more at, at fourth smith uh, but one of the things that happened was call but now carl walther okay, but call Wal it's just super slick um okay and the trigger is that very little take up right here okay let's not do that 